It was almost 50 years ago. We are about you know, less than a month away from the 50-year anniversary of Paul Henderson scoring the game-winning goal in Game 8 of the eight-game Summit Series between Canada and USSR. One man who lived it, he played it. Former Montreal Canadiens player, former Montreal Canadiens general manager, Hockey Hall of Famer, the Senator, the great Serge Savard, to talk about the 1972 Summit Series right here on the Sick Podcast. I'm Marinero. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero. The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadiens win the Stanley Cup. Sports entertainment like no other. Brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the Cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. Marinero, the sick podcast brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. The beer for those who follow their instinct and live their passions in order to make their mark. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs had a 50 goal score, it's time you go back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you because the 50 goal score was a long time ago. As a matter of fact, it was Stefan Richet who was the last player to score 50 goals for the Montreal Canadiens. And it's actually fitting that this is the tagline for Lacage because the man who drafted Stefan Richet is none other than Serge Savard. How are you? Hey, very good. Very good. That was a great draft. You remember that you had Stefan Roche, you had Patrick Roy, you had Shane Corson Tour. Yeah, Corson Savoda. Uh, the first two years, uh, the first two years of my draft, 83, 84, I had nine players on my team when we won the cup in 86, including including free agent that I did not draft that year. Those wow. two years. Yeah. Wow, that's that's unbelievable. Stefan Richet, eh? 50 goal scorer, two times in three years. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he could have scored more. He, he, he has so much talent. And uh, if I could draw, you know, the perfect athlete on a computer, it would be Stefan Richet. You know, he's, he's built. You know, he, he he can do everything. If he played baseball, he hit the the ball over the fence. He played golf. He hit the ball at 300. He's, 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 he's really a, a great athlete. He's a perfect buddy. Uh, he had a great shot, a fast skater, uh, good all around player. Really, even, liked. even when he plays with the alumni so many years later, like if he decides to put it in fifth gear, it's, well, it's he's, nothing to watch. He's, uh, he's better than those guys because you know, he stays in shape. I saw him at my tournament a couple of weeks ago and he, he's still in top shape. Wow. No, he's still in top shape. He looks fantastic. That's probably why I wasn't there, because everyone that was there was in top shape. So knowing <laughs> I wasn't, I had to this say. Is, this is not true. Uh, this is not true. You know, uh, from uh, I'm one of the youngest one. When I, when I look at the Team Canada 72, I'm 76 years old, and, and only Guy Lapointe probably younger than me, Bobby Clark. But, but uh, you know, a guy like Harry Sinden is 90 years old now. Wow. Wow. And, and, and still pretty sharp. And uh, it really, eh? Ivan Cornoy could not play at my tournament. He came for the dinner. But, you know, he, Ivan had four, four back operation. He had knee operation, shoulder operation. Yeah. Same thing with uh, Peter Mahavlis. He had a tough time. He was he was just coming back from uh, from from a shoulder operation. And, uh, wow. We're there. <laughs> Serge, you know, it's 50 years, 50 years have gone by since the Summit Series, and I never had a chance to watch it live. As a matter of fact, I was born in 1972 on November 23rd, to be precise, 1972. So two months after uh, Canada won the Summit Series, four wins, three losses, and a tie, I was born. But obviously, I heard about it throughout my entire youth. My dad, who arrived in Montreal in 1967, 
still to this day talks about the summit series as some of the best, the best hockey he's ever seen. And, you know, for me at the Canada cup, 86 was it because I was about 14 years old at the time, but Serge, can you believe that 50 years have gone by 50? Oh, it, it goes so fast. And, uh, and, you know, I attempt a lot of charity cause and a lot of golf tournament for hospital. And, and every time, Ian, every time, you know, we have a discussion about Team Canada 72. And I'd say for the guy that was born, that were born, you know, starting at, at 1980, they all remember. They all remember where they were. You know, it, it, it's such of an event. And, and and don't forget in Canada, in 1972, we were 22 million people in Canada. 16 million watch it, watch the eight games. My God, that's unbelievable. 16 million watch wow. the eight. And, you know, if you include the babies, I mean, almost 100% of the people watch the eight game. The, 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 the country stopped. Uh, everybody at school, they tell you, well, the prof brought the television sets in the room or, or the radio. Yeah. Uh, and it was in the afternoon. You know, it wasn't Montreal time. It wasn't the yeah. afternoon. The first four games were in Canada. The next yeah. four games were in the Soviet Union. Yeah. Um, you lost the first one and they shocked you. Um, what did you expect going into that series? You well, didn't know much uh, about uh, the Russians at the time. Tony, I'll tell you why we were shocked on the first game. Because... Uh, it, it it's oh, being overconfident you know at that time everybody told us it was in the paper all over the place the great red fishers uh, his headline was montreal won't lose a game uh, everybody said canada in eight that was the first time those guys claimed they were amateur and that was the first time uh, an all-star team from the nhl played the russian and 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 that the night before the series starts, I resent then talk to the players and he says, we were 35 and a lot of them were there for training camp. And, and he said, everybody will play. And, and, and the first the, was so confidence. The first game, he dressed five defensemen. You know, oh you, you, can, you can't do that again, a fast hockey team like they were. So our defensemen were dead. In, as, going in the third period, you know, and, and and a lot of people say, well, you were not in that great of a shape, but we won 48 hours after, you know, in, in Toronto. We didn't regain our shape in, overnight. Of course not. See, so so it's it's really hitting the the series being very, very overconfident. That that that's and it's normal that happened that yeah. way. That was a big wake wake up call, and uh, that series did a lot for hockey. Did a lot for the for the unity of the country. Yeah, and there's a lot of people they don't know that in nineteen in nineteen seventy two, our flag, the Canadian flag, was only five years old. It was only five years old. Uh, and it was criticized all across the country. Not everybody liked that model. They want something more like the Union Jack or something else. As soon as we put that flag on, on front of our jersey, after that series, you never heard anything about the flag. You know, it was everybody's flag. And, and, and that way, uh, Team Canada did a lot to unite the country. Um. So you win that game, and, and the series, so you, you lose the first game, you win the second game, like you said. Um, that series, though, without Bobby Orr, right, who was hurt, but he, he trained with the team the entire time, did he not? He, you know, he, did not, he did not put the skates on. He was just around the team? Yeah, and we didn't have Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr at his prime and Bobby Orr at his prime. You see, we got Bobby Orr on one leg in 76, and he was the player of the tournament. Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I I know he didn't even practice. You know, I know I, I was in the same dressing room and he had ice all over. And if you remember, he came back in Chicago and he, he retired after yes. about 15 games or so. And uh, it's too bad to, to being hurt that way at so young age because, yeah. you know, in this time, he was there's no doubt he was the best player in the National Hockey League. And 
a lot of people will say best player of all time, but it, I, I don't like to compare. You know, Gretzky was the best in his time, and Lafleur was the best in the seventies. You know, Guy Lafleur he dominated the league for six yeah. seven. Yeah, hundred percent. It would have been interesting to see though Bobby Orr play in that series, right? Oh. To see just what the outcome oh. of that series would have been with Bobby Orr. Yeah, yeah, and all. And Bobby Hall at his prime was 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 quite a player, you know. Bobby Clark uh, formed that line with Paul Henderson um, that a lot of people didn't think was actually going to be able to make a difference. Paul Henderson ends up scoring the game-winning goal in the last three games. The last three games, yeah. That's a, that's a, can you imagine, when you say clutch player, can it get more clutch? Then you need to win the well, final three games of the series to win the series, and Paul Henderson scores the game winner in all three? Yeah, but Paul Henderson, uh, he, in his old career, he did not play for a great team. He played in, Chicago, in Detroit, then he played in Toronto, when Toronto didn't have a very good team. Uh, uh, and if you look, Ron Ellis and, and Bobby Clark, two grinder. Correct, yeah. Uh, two grinder and 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 Bob, uh, and and Anderson had a lot of skill, but but Bobby Clark is a much better player than a lot of people think. It's too bad he played with with a team that 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 violence was number one on the team. But he did, Bobby Clark didn't need to play that type of team. Bobby Clark was a very 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 good player, very talented player. Very talented player, and, and he worked hard. And and uh, and Ivan Ivan Cornway, he had a great series. If, if I can, Senator Bobby Clark to the Flyers was kind of like what Bob Gainey was to the Canadians. Correct me if I'm wrong, or in that mold, or a little bit more talent. I, I would think so. He, 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 I think Clark he had more talent offensively than Bob Gainey. Yes, you know, the talent wise. But yes, the you know, the role that. All right, we uh, we lost Serge Savard, unfortunately, but uh, these things happen with technology. Uh, speaking of which, we're going to try and get him back. Oh, we got him back. But uh, speaking of technology, if you're bored of Netflix Canada, why not try it out in the U.S. Uh, or even in the U.K.? Using NordVPN, uh, you can do just that. You grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash sickpod to get a huge discount off of your NordVPN plan plus... Four months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money back guarantee. All right, Serge, we got you back. We were talking about uh we we're talking about Bobby Clark and of course the type of player that he was. You talked about Ron Ellis being a grinder, Clark a grinder, Paul Henderson clutch. Uh was there a player that we haven't mentioned yet that you were looking at him in that locker room or when you were on the bench or when you're on the S, you were watching him go and you were like, man. What a great player this guy is. It's so good to have him on this team. Well, uh, beside Ivan, I think Ivan has had a series just as good as Paul Anderson. We remember Paul because, of course, he scored a winning goal at the, yeah. before the end of the period. There were 44 seconds left, uh, and he, he scored the last three games. But but Ivan was right there behind. He played so well. And the guy that I that I, I did not respect uh, because of Phil Esposito and I played against the Bruins and I didn't like the Bruins and 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 and, and I, I don't think Phil ever played at that level. He brought himself to a different level. He was not playing at that level in the National Hockey League. He became our leader. He uh, his speech in Vancouver was a masterpiece. He, he, he was a rally for our team. That part of me, that was the famous speech to the nation, right? Where he... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I, I, I'll tell you, uh, I, I, I had so much more respect for the, for the guy after that series. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and still, uh, Team Canada, it's funny. Everybody was marked. Every player was marked by that series and and we we still close we still talk to each other and and uh, you know we we were talking like we played together for 15 years and and we played just you know six weeks two months together now on the opposite side on the other side of the ice the russians who during that series did you say my god 
This oh, guy is incredible. Arlamov. Yeah. Arlamov. Arlamov was was uh, uh, Yakushev. Yeah, Yakushev Arlamov. That the, of course, uh, Tracek. Everybody knew Tracek, but he didn't yeah. have a. You know, his goals against average pretty high in that series. Even yeah. our, both goalies uh, on both sides. They didn't have a great series, a great average, but but Yakushev, I think Yakushev is. We didn't know them before, but but looking at Yakushev, you know, uh, uh, you know, you, you say Jean Bilbao. There is Jean Bilbao. I don't know if you watched the tape, and I think he finished. And Harlamov is Cornway. It, it was a yeah. carbon copy of those two players, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And they were great. They were great players. Harry Sinden put together that team, right? Harry and and, and John Ferguson together. Uh, Who was his uh, assistant? Yeah, I, it was his assistant. And I think it's uh, uh, John Ferguson, Harry Sinden, uh, and, uh, uh, and Al Eagleson was with those guys when they formed yeah. the team. And, and, and Fergie, if you... Uh, Fergie told me, and I read the story about that. When he when he joined the team with uh, with Harry, he says, "Harry, I want I have one condition. I I have to pick two players." And you know, I I, I missed a full year in '71, and I came back in in at the end of the season. I came back in February '72. Yeah, and I was not supposed to play in that series, and not supposed to be invited in that series, and. And Fergie and Vite, these two players were 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 Peter Mahovlich and myself. And uh, so he he was pretty proud. And I'm, I'm, I'm he got it right. And I'm so happy because you know for 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 us it's the it, it's the it's the main event of our it's sports event of our career. Of course, of course. Do you can you recall? <laughs> How difficult it was uh, being in Russia for the final four games of that series. I mean, we've heard things in the past. Uh, certain teams do uh, they'll they'll paint the locker room or they'll make noise at the hotel or call up the hotel the night before. Did you go through any of that adversity? Was 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 the Soviet Union a uh, a scary place to go? Was it was it intimidating? Not at all. We we were. Yeah, and it was army people with with with, with rifles uh, at the door of the hotel. It's a communist country. Yeah, that uh, would scare me. Uh, uh, well, I mean, nobody was afraid, you know. Yeah, we were. Don't forget, it was three thousand Canadian at the same time, and, and our hotel was full of Canadian. It was only Canadian inside inside the inside that hotel, in tourist hotel, which they destroyed a couple of years back, right on the Red Square. Right on the Red Square. Of course, some some people uh, complained that they had a phone call in the middle of the night, and uh, uh, maybe I had one or two, but it could have happened here in in, in in Montreal. So that really didn't bother me. And people say, "Well, they stole our food because we brought our steaks, we brought our chef," and and those people, you know, if you're a chef in, in a hotel here and uh, you know those people were so poor they had nothing maybe we did maybe they took a couple steaks but we didn't run out of it we didn't run out of uh, of uh, of the beer that we brought from canada at that time and uh, to me i love to play down there it was a big ice surface and and, uh, and I, I think i'm a, i was a mobile player and I always like playing. Uh, I would prefer in my whole career to play on the Olympic ice. Yeah, that that, that gives you more 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 space on on ice. So your backs are against the wall in Russia. You need to win uh, the last three games: game six, seven, and eight. You lost game five. You need to win game six, seven, and eight. Now, um, of course. Um, you're always thinking you're going to win as a competitor, I imagine. But did you have doubts? Like, were you were you worried that you were going to blow this? And were you worried that if you were, that it was going to be really difficult to come back to Canada? Uh, I, I, I didn't have time to think about that. 
I, I, when you're an athlete, you always think you're gonna win. Every time you jump on the ice, I'm gonna win. And 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 I don't think anybody saw that as a whole. We have to win three games. That's our goal was to win the next game and see what happened after. And th that's the way we look at it. And and one by one, and and uh, and we succeed. And I was convinced each game. Uh, even the last game in Russia, being two goals behind, nobody stopped. Nobody stops. You know, we have a chance to win this thing, and 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 we did. We did. You know, we had those Russian interpret coming behind our bench at the end of the game, say, "You know, you guys, if we if we tie the game, we win the series," because it was the goals against the goals for the goals for, uh, and they were winning if Anderson doesn't score. 30, 34 seconds to go. Yeah. Did um, Was there anyone who stepped up after the second period of game eight to rally the troops? I know you talked about Phil Esposito's speech to rally the nation, well, which was, I think it was well, done after a game, but was there anything that you remember that was said in the locker I, room, somebody stepping no, up? Not, not really. Everybody was talking to each other. You okay. know, I, I can't tell you. If there's one, one time that the players didn't need anybody to pep them up. Everybody was emotionally right on top of the house. And and uh, and as, as an athlete, I can tell you, never in my whole career that I could elevate myself emotionally that high. Wow. Wow. Uh, when you watch Canada Cup 86, because like I said, as a kid, that's what I watched. Did it compare? Even a little bit? Uh, it's unfair. Uh, I, 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 76, you were too young again. You were four years yeah. old. Yeah. 76, I think it personally, I think it's probably the greatest team ever. Oh, yeah. Eh? You had Bobby Orr at this prime. You had, had Gila Fleury at Robinson. You know, uh, is it, that that beautiful painting you have behind you? Was that 76? Yeah, that's 72. <laughs> oh, that's 72. Pardon me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But 76, uh, uh, you, you look at the 76 lineup, and you'll see Bobby Hall was there, and and and, and Orr, that was, that was the, the last of Bobby Orr, the last yeah. greatness of Bobby Orr. Uh, we had Rogi Vachon in that. I, I think it's the year that, uh, that, that, uh, that Dryden took off. He took the one season off. He was he was pretty upset at the uh, at the salary that Sam Pollock offered him, and and he took the year off that year. And Rogi Vachon was in the net in in seventy six. He had a great series. Wow. Uh, who have you had a chance to catch up with? And I know the uh, once again the fifty anniversary fifty year anniversary is here. It's approaching uh, in the next month or so. Have you had a chance to talk to uh, some of your former teammates? Catch up with them. Oh, we've been. We have a, a board of director, and and Ken Dryden and myself, uh, we're on the executive, and and we've been preparing the the seventy two festivities. We talk every week. We have we have a meeting every week. I talked to 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 Phil a couple of days ago. Phil is on the board. Uh, I talked to Bobby Clark two days ago, and and uh, I had six of them at my golf tournament. So, so, you know, I I. I it's it's only a few days away that this the, the second of September, and I must have done about fifteen interviews so far. Everybody's calling from all over. They want to talk about the series. The best one is which one? The, which which best one? Well, which one is the best interview? Oh, uh, you of course. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's, uh speaking but, of your, you know, you, I said that and and. Uh, I don't want to compare with anybody, but but everything you do, you love sports. You can tell you love sports. That sports okay. is your life. That's why it's very interesting to to talk sports, especially hockey, with you. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it, Serge. You did something at your golf tournament uh, last week, besides raising money for charity, which was fantastic. But you honored Gila Fleur, right? And I, I thought that was that was beautiful for you to do. I mean, he. He, he left us, uh, you know, uh, last year, but, uh, or not last year, but, you know, several, several months ago, but not forgotten, huh? No, uh, 
Guy, he, you know, the last year of his life, he start, uh, he raised money for, for the shim, the, the, the hospital. Yes. Yes. And he asked me to be co-president and raise about $2 million. Wow. And, and till the last few weeks before he died, he was still calling at Le Chim to see how it goes. Uh, he, uh, everybody that give a certain amount of money, I think it's $10,000. He called them personally up to two weeks before he died. He, 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 he signed uh, one of his jersey to the donor. He did that till the end. And I, 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 I call him, I talked to him a couple of times and, and, uh, I said, this is probably the greatest thing you've done in your life. You know, you make a difference. You made he made a, he made the difference on the ice. We, we were all better with a player like that. You know, we were yeah. all better and, and he made a difference. He made a difference in this province. He made a difference. Everybody talk about him. He made a difference till the last day of his life and i have the greatest respect for him for 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 what he was yeah. as not only as an athlete uh, as a human being never you never know. turned out an autograph you know was always ready to 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 shake hand with the kids and sign sign his book or sign his stick uh he's, he's just one of those guys yeah, you know serge I, I i thank you for saying what you said when you said that i really love sports but um to tell you the truth i mean my love for sports was uh, gila fleur was a big part of it like he's i fell in love with him i fell in love with him going down the right wing and and uh and um you know he's a big reason why you know i fell in love with hockey and i fell in love with sports and uh i'm, I'm not gonna lie to you i just i can't forget about him like i think about him all the time you know there he goes he made a difference in your life yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm trying to find something. I, there's, there's, there's so many Gila Fleur portraits out, pictures out there, but there's one that I saved here in my phone. Which, if I can find it, I'm getting a canvas made and like a beautiful painting that you have behind you. Uh, I'm gonna put this one behind me, and uh, here we go. Hold on a second. Uh, I think I have it here. Uh, out of all of them, this one is the one I like the most. I don't know if you can see that. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? This is great. Yeah, this. I want to get a, a canvas of that done. So you know, ask ask Mr. Bono to make a make make a painting of it. Oh, that's Jimmy Bono's dad that made your painting. Yeah, that's a beautiful painting. Yeah, you could make something great. Wow, that's amazing, Serge. Uh, once again, uh, fifty years later, uh, the country is so happy to talk about it. You did so many Canadians proud and, and good for you. Always giving back. You talked about what you've been able to do uh, as well. What you do for charity. You're a good man, sir. Savard. I'm happy to know you. Thank you so much for coming on the program, Senator. Thank you. Anytime, Tony. Thank, Merci you. Beaucoup. Thank you. All right. There you have it. The Senator, sir. Savard. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook comment sick, if you're listening on audio, please leave us a five-star review and write sick S I C K. It's our way of feeling the love. Thanks for doing this. Speaking of love, Guy Lafleur, God love you. Can't forget about you. I'll never forget about you. Thank you. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by 8.6, Intense by Nature. And Lakaj. If the last time you went to Lakaj was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lakaj. The menu will surprise you. <laughs>